Retina Rounds, episode number 122. Inverted ILM flap for a large macular hole. Should you use the flap to cover the hole, or should you fill the hole with the ILM flap? That's what we'll be discussing today, and our guest surgeon is Dr. R.P. Singh, a vitreoretinal specialist and chairman of the Visitech Eye Center in New Delhi, India. This case beautifully demonstrates the so-called double rexus technique with ILM flaps, which he used for a patient with a large macular hole. We want to thank Dr. Singh for sharing this case. Dr. Singh's patient is a 64-year-old pseudophagic female with decreased vision for six months. Her best corrected visual acuity is 20 over 250, and IOP is within normal limits. The fundoscopic examination is significant for a full thickness macular hole. You can see the OCT B scan on this slide and there are a number of features to note. First, there appears to be an elevated cuff at the edge of the macular hole, as well as some cystoid edema, both of which may confer a higher likelihood of macular hole closure. Here are the quantitative measurements. The minimum linear diameter is 550 microns, making this a large macular hole. The base linear diameter is 1219 microns and the height is 560 microns. The macular hole index, defined as the ratio of the height to the base linear diameter, is 0.46. Holes with a macular hole index greater than 0.5 have a higher likelihood of closure, and this is pretty close. For a review of OCT features for macular hole surgical planning, please check out episode number 55. So given this information, what would your surgical plan be? There's good evidence that macular hole closure is higher in large holes with ILM flaps versus conventional peeling. And that's the approach that Dr. Singh has chosen for this case. He'll perform inverted ILM flaps and the so-called double rexus technique, whereby the ILM peeling is extended beyond what is required to create the inverted ILM flaps. Let's see how he does this. So at this point in the case, the core vitrectomy has already been performed and the PVD has already been induced. Some peripheral shaving has already been performed. And you can see here that some tissue blue has been used to stain the ILM. Dr. Singh has already fractured the ILM and is fashioning his first uh, infranasal flap. Now he's extending uh, the peel and you can notice here that he's not going too far peripheral because he wants these flaps to be just enough to be able to fill this macular hole. You can see as he's creating those flaps, he's tucking them into, uh, into the macular hole. Now you do wanna be careful, of course, as you're, um, as you're placing or inserting these flaps into the macular hole that you don't push too hard and potentially damage the subfovial RPE. So you can see this ILM peeling continuing here for the supranasal flap, and as the flap is being peeled, uh, the edges are being tucked uh, into the macular hole, almost like multiple, uh, multiple flaps, multiple layers that are, that are being uh, put into this macular hole. Now one of the reasons for tucking the flaps into the macular hole is to try to avoid um, any dislodgement or any movement of these flaps uh, towards the end of the case when an air fluid exchange is performed and then the air is exchanged for gas. Uh, and so by tucking these flaps into the hole, they're more likely to stay in place as opposed to a uh, flap that's just, rest, uh, that's just placed over or is covering the macular hole. And we'll talk more about the pros and cons of this towards the end of the case. And you can see that that temporal peeling has been completed. All of the, the, the almost like the petals of a flower uh, have been uh, folded into the macular hole. Uh, and now Dr. Singh is going to move on to perform the second rexus. So this is the double rexus technique. And the idea here is to extend the ILM peeling uh, more broadly across the macula to create more laxity, uh, to relieve any traction, and to potentially uh, decrease the risk uh, for, um, for macular hole uh, a closure failure or a reopening of a macular hole uh, at a later date. So now you can see this uh, ILM flap that's being grasped and it's being very nicely pulled all the way around. And you can see Dr. Singh is, um, is leading the edge of this flap so that it doesn't fracture, so that it doesn't, um, doesn't go out too, uh, it goes out the appropriate distance. Uh, and uh, all, all the while, while that flap is being created, while this, uh, this rexus is being extended, he can also see his forcep tip. So this is a very uh, safe way uh, of, of performing ILM peeling. Uh, to minimize any potential iatrogenic damage uh, to the retina. So now you can see that the broader ILM peeling has been performed. Now we're uh, skipping forward to the air fluid exchange. You can see that those flaps of the ILM are staying within the macular hole, uh, and that's the end of the case. I can tell you that Dr. Singh's patient did well with closure of the macular hole, uh, and she experienced a significant improvement in visual acuity. 
But let's get back to the question we posed at the beginning of the video. Should you use ILM flaps to simply cover the hole or should you fill the hole with the, uh, with the ILM flaps? Now both approaches are reasonable, uh, but I found these two studies to be interesting reads and I suggest that you check them out. The first by Tao et al. is a meta-analysis of seven studies, uh, including a total of 139 eyes with ILM flap covering and 121 eyes with ILM flap filling the hole. The second study by Zeng et al. was published in Retina earlier this year. It's a retrospective comparative study including 74 eyes with large macular holes, 40 of which underwent ILM flap covering the hole, and 34 with ILM flaps inserted into the macular hole. Now both studies demonstrated equivalent rates of macular hole closure. However, there were some advantages to covering the flap with ILM rather than filling the hole with the ILM flap. These include significantly better post-operative visual acuity and a higher proportion of reconstituted ELM. The meta-analysis by Tao et al. also found a significantly higher proportion of easy reconstitution in the ILM covering group. However, it should be noted that simply covering the macular hole with an ILM flap does run the risk of the flap shifting in position and not covering the hole, which is why some surgeons prefer inserting the ILM into the hole. The downside, however, is that the ILM in the hole may prevent a type 1 closure with reconstitution of outer retinal layers that may ultimately impact vision. So what can you do to keep an ILM flap in place if you are simply covering the hole? Well, typically the flap may move during air fluid exchange, so you will want to do this step slowly and consider passive extrusion towards the end of air fluid exchange. Next, if the flap moves and isn't covering the hole, you can consider repositioning it under air with ILM forceps, a soft tip, or flex loop. Now remember not to engage aspiration, whether that be passive or as active, if you're using the soft tip cannula, since this may aspirate and then amputate the flap. Last, the construction of the flap itself can be helpful. You can consider using a wider base so that the flap covers more than just the hole, so that if it shifts, it'll still be covering the hole. Also, a temporal or a superior hinged flap may be preferred. During air fluid exchange over the optic nerve, a temporal hinged flap will be pulled towards the optic nerve and that will cover the macular hole. Similarly, a superior hinged flap may allow gravity to help the ILM drape over the macular hole. And last, you can consider putting some viscoelastic over the flap to hold it in place. So to the Retina Rounds community, let us know in the comment section your surgical preference and share any tips that you may have to ensure that ILM flaps stay where you want them to be. Dr. Singh, thank you again for sharing this excellent case and for giving us all an opportunity to learn more about surgical strategies for large macular hole closure. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.